So, hi, everyone. Yeah, as we just, uh, I don't know if anyone was watching that little bit of the live stream before, but uh, yeah, I'm Charlie. That's my, uh, that's my online, uh, online Nick since probably ever. And uh, yes, I am indeed a uh, FreeBSD ports committer. Um, yeah, that's, uh, there's, no, there's not really too much interesting background about that uh, besides, you know, doing a lot of uh, desktop slinging and, and apparently, you know, part of that has stretched into Linux later stuff, uh, but also, you know, but also some Python stuff, which has actually become a lot more pressing lately um compared to compared to what we're going to talk about here but uh but that is in and of itself another story so today we're today the uh the title of this is called uh, other user lands in the freebsd linux elator uh, so the freeb for those who are less familiar or not familiar yes freebsd uh the base system has a little has a little layer that allows uh allows one to run unmodified Linux binaries, and uh, traditionally, well at, well, at least up in the uh, up in the ports tree, uh, that is that is achieved through uh, CentOS seven ports or stuff from CentOS seven that is essentially being repackaged into our FreeBSD package format, and then maybe a, a little bit, you know, a little bit of pixie dust here and there to uh, make it usable for, you know not having to go into a ch root but uh, today we're gonna today we're gonna be uh, doing some ch rooting because um you know putting other user lands uh or getting other user lands to work uh can be kind of tricky without uh without uh, putting yourself in a ch root so that's what we're going to be doing but i'll, I'll kind of go over just a, a little bit of background of um of just uh a, a little bit of some of it and then, and then we'll just kind of get into, so I, I came from March. I originally, uh, well, not originally, but my immediately previous operating, primary operating system that I used on my desktop machines, which really is my laptop, was Arch Linux. So I still have a lot of affinity for how Arch does things. Actually, a lot of my friends are kind of Arch fanatics. You know who you are. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to be uh that's what we're going to be showing you. But a lot of these concepts you can kind of apply to, you know, if you, if you have a different favorite Linux distribution that you want to run, um, let's say like, so if I had more time before this, I probably would have tried to get a uh, void Linux running on, running as well, configured and all. But uh, yeah, we just ran out of time and I'm kind of knackered anyway. So, so that's that. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So uh, if anyone has any questions or trolling or, any other any other heckling you would like to uh, you would like to do to me you can do that on IRC uh, BSD pound sign BSD can dash stream one and that's the number one one libera so um, so that's that looking at uh, looking at they're, they're just going about uh, I see it Daniel zoom in the bread web browser works fine though I interestingly interestingly enough uh, my original motivation for doing all this Linux later stuff and, you know, trying to present to you something was actually try to get the, the Linux client to work in the Linux later without using the CentOS packages because yeah, I, I'm not a CentOS person. I, I'm, I'm just not a fan. So uh, unfortunately that is not the case, but I'll kind of show you a little bit of the trials and tribulations to attempt to get there. And, uh, and actually a couple a little bonus content, of um of stuff that does in fact work um one of the things that one of the things that i can't show you was that uh, when i still ran a centos 7 um the, the centos 7 user land i used uh, a couple years ago i used the uh used the quarter software that's a uh, that's an electronic uh electronic uh simulation software for uh, circuits and whatnot um that worked pretty well um besides the fact that i forgot to install the gnome themes but anyway yeah. So, um, let's see, I'll share, uh, let's go ahead and start off with the wiki page here. Let's see. Okay. Here's the, uh, here's the FreeBSD Linux Elator, uh, wiki page. Uh, I don't think I've ever edited this one, although I probably should, but, uh, for those, like I said, uh, for those who are less familiar or not familiar, 
uh, go ahead and give this a read. Um, but this is just a little a little overview. Currently claim, okay, so this status line is pretty outdated, or maybe it's outdated. Well, no, someone updated it. I just saw the Linux 3.2.0. Um, yeah, so yeah, 12 does in fact report Linux 3.2.0. And then I'm not sure if 13 also reports 4.4.0. I know current obviously does, because that's what I run. And uh, yeah, so this was in my earliest uh, in my earliest experiments of doing uh, getting in my case Arch Linux, the Arch Linux user land to uh, to you know be useful. Um, yeah, this wasn't. It, it, I started. Uh, yeah, it was back at back when it was still reporting three point two point zero. Um, eventually, I think uh, some of the other folks like Traz and. And, uh, and and a few others who actually work on the the base components of the Linux so later they they occasionally would update it to I think uh, to newer uh, newer versions of the three point three dot whatever series um, primarily because you know glibc apparently is very sensitive to what the kernel what the Linux kernel version report is um, I ran into a few problems uh, in the early days um, just. Uh, you know, just trying to run anything, just even trying to run C shell, you know, just even trying to run a shell, uh, it would error out uh, because the, because glibc said, uh, yeah, your Linux kernel version is too old for me. And Arch being Arch, you know, Arch kind of has, kind of has the latest and greatest of everything being a rolling release distribution. So, uh, so of course it's going to have the, the newest version that they obviously tested and dog fooded of glibc and whatever else they figure out how to update and so at the time i believe yeah it was still 3.2.0 and um yeah nothing would run because the the version was outdated eventually they updated it to another uh, three dot whatever uh because i think one of the other folks one of the other folks were trying to run some cute stuff um yeah it was like it was like cute five programs and uh, that was that had a minimum hard requirement of like of, of another three dot whatever. So they 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 bounced the uh, the version up there, it gave me a little bit of a reprieve, but not too much. And then of course now we're on now it's reporting four dot four dot zero. Of course this can be this can be adjusted, although uh, I can't remember off the top of my head which sysctl um, which sysctl it is. We have to look that up, but that's not too important. Where this is works okay. So yeah, development, you know, we're not gonna go over roadmap yet. Whoever else is actually involved in in uh, in whatever they're in the base system stuff, that's their uh, that's their thing. I'm just trying to get stuff to get stuff to actually be practical, if you will. So yeah, so like I said, two main ways to use the Linux later. Uh, the first one you know, in the, in the handbook describes the CentOS 7 packages or ports, which are just repacks of CentOS 7 stuff. So if you look here, this is the, this is Linux base dash C7 or Linux base CentOS 7, right? So here's the port make file. And of course it's listing a whole bunch of these uh, disk names for, you know, the, the package names from the CentOS 7 repositories. Now, if you look, uh, yeah, so yeah, you see like let's say E2FS progs, whatever version it is, dot EL7. So CentOS, Fedora, the, the the Red Hat folks, they all uh, suffix their RPMs. Yeah, so they these are essentially RPMs. Uh, we got some more stuff down here, and then yeah, so what it pretty much does, pretty much just extracts all of these, all of these into. Uh, into and, and during the port building process it extracts all of these and then it just repacks it and then maybe along the way you know you might have to especially for linux base if you want to run this you know without ch rooting you got to remove some stuff you know you got to remove you, know, you got to even though you might be in slash compat slash linux uh you still got to remove the stuff that is not uh it's not really relevant to let's say you know like op actual operation um, while you're, while it's not a booted system, like so, you can, so some stuff like boot, the, the the boot directory, yeah, you yeah you don't need that when you're in Linux later. Uh, let's see, home, 
you, well, if you if you want to keep home, you're going to have two separate uh, home hierarchies, one in FreeBSD and then the other one in Linux later. If, I mean, if you want that, go ahead. But that's what that's not what this does. That removes it. Um, some files are some files are removed or mostly binaries, especially when it comes to uh, when it comes to user authentication, uh, things like that. Because of course that's going to conflict if you uh, if you don't sanitize it. If, I, again, if you if you don't want to run it in a ch root or in a jail, this is this is the kind of smoke show that you got to do. So, so that's the so that's Linux base. I think there's another. I was looking through here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, these are just emulators, but but I I definitely saw a couple more. There's a couple more examples in. Uh, Let's see. Let's go into sysutils. Sysutils, and if you just search for, they usually, or even just C7. There we go. DOS FS tools. So here's a DOS FS tools. So of course, uh, yeah. yeah. So in this case, use the Linux RPM. Use the Linux RPM. It just downloads it and it just repacks it. RP RPMs are just you know you, you can extract them without uh, actually installing them with uh, with CPIO or or even uh, your favorite uh, libarchive enabled archiver you can extract that and then repack it no big deal so that's the that's how Linux C7 works but like again like that got old for me you know because you know you, there's that whole unpack and repack and and the other uh, black magic they got to do to you know, not doing it in CA true. So if you're comfortable doing that, you know, you can keep doing it, but that's not me here. That's not what this presentation is. So the second way, Linux jails or Linux CA roots. That's how we enable, well, in this case, they, they describe how to do Ubuntu or Debian because it's essentially the same tool to do that, to actually uh, get one of their user lands um, in FreeBSD. So in my case, it's Arch Linux. It's actually a very similar, very similar method to do it. So in this case with Ubuntu or Debian, because they both use uh, apt, the, 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 the app suite to manage their packages, um, they have a little dev bootstrap tool, which I believe I, I haven't run it myself. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and, um, and, and pretty much it, it just runs apt. It just uh, runs apt, uh, whatever it does, whatever whatever base set of packages it needs to for a functional, you know, minimal, you know, Debian or Ubuntu user land, and it just installs it wherever. So, so pretty much, uh, yes, yeah, so you, you do have to set up, you know, you do have to set up, do some background setup, like your FS tab, you do need to make sure that, uh, that the stuff is mounted in the correct place. Uh, you might want to change your sysctls, um, change the default uh, default compat uh, Linux um, setting to the new directory or to the different directory, so that uh, so that you don't have to you know try to fiddle around with it. Um, but of course, you know it, it, if you do want to have this coexist with your CentOS seven stuff, then yeah, you're 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 definitely best off. Uh, doing the rename and, and that's what I've done as well for my Arch Linux stuff. So th th this is more, yeah, so this is more Ubuntu Debian specific. So with Arch Linux, it's a very similar, very similar deal, except we don't have that bootstrap. Um, Arch Linux actually, they do have, so here's the Arch Linux wiki. Some of this is also, you, you kind of, I kind of just like kind of hodgepodge, you know, took bits and pieces from both the Linux jails, the, the, the Debian, Ubuntu way and the usual Arch Linux installation guide. So uh, there's a, we don't need all this stuff. There's one part. So Arch, when you when you install Arch, once you actually get to the part where you you know passed all the file system stuff and whatnot, Arch actually does have a a script. So here we go. Inst yeah, here we go. Packstrap. So Arch does have Packstrap uh, to install you know, whatever, whatever you need in, in a mounted, you know, directory here. So we are, we've actually, or in, in, in my case, we don't use Packstrap. 
we did it's actually not needed pack traps really only for when you're when you're actually installing arch links for real on an actual machine or or a virtual machine for that matter instead just use pac-man just use pac-man itself because because it, it, actually pack strap invokes pac-man anyway so pac-man is arch linux's package manager right we already have a pac-man port in the ports collection it's it's a bit outdated this is still this is still in fabricator i haven't committed this yet uh, it actually still needs a lot more work um you know based on a lot of a lot more dog fooding uh it's still the current version at least in this uh in in this uh in the fabricator, but um, it still needs a lot of work in terms of user experience. Um, I tried to do it, try to do this flavors style, which you know there, there's a regular Pac-Man and then there's an Arch Linux Pac-Man. I'm gonna have to change that a bit more. But essentially, you know, if if any of you want to test this out, uh, just take down the take down this uh, you know differential number, uh, patch your uh, ports tree and give it a whirl. Um, Although, uh, although one of the other one of the other dependencies that it needs um, for for the Arch Linux repositories to run, which is actually what I use, so again, completely unmodified, unmodified user experience, you know. So that means also using the Arch Linux repositories. And the Arch Linux repositories they have they they do this PGP signing stuff um, kind of strictly, um, and uh, the the I, I do have the key ring, I do have the key ring committed into the ports tree. But unfortunately, it's a bit outdated, and actually, the new way that they build the keyring, they actually build it on on the spot during the build process, and that requires another tool. So um, that's not yet the the update to that is not yet available. And so, as a result, if you try to do this, if you try to if you try this right now with the with the keyring that's currently in the port street, it's not going to work because as soon as you try to install something, it'll say uh, it'll, it'll say this one key is uh, is not trusted or something like that. It'll just abort. So, so that's the, but again, I will put that up in the, uh, I'll put some updates in Fabricator and try to announce them if I can. Um, but pretty much, yeah, so pretty much uh, you, you install the Arch Linux Pac-Man uh, just as you would um, normally you install that. And then, and then uh, it will just give you just the, the usual, you know, Pac-Man um, commands and, and whatnot. So once you do that, once you do that, you, you essentially just uh, install um, you install Arch Linux packages as usual. Well, in this case, if you want to have a very minimal, oops, I don't want that window. Zoom. There we go. So start off with the minimal. Uh, so once you get Pac-Man, the Arch Linux Pac-Man installed, uh, you pretty much just install this base thing. So basically. Uh, you know, sudo, if you have sudo pacman dash capital S base, and that'll give you the very minimalist Arch Linux user land that, that you would need to function. So that's really the, that's really that. And Zoom is being annoying with this up, down, you know, dragging thing. So I haven't played around with actually jailing it yet, with uh, Bastille, so Bastille apparently had they, they they did a little blog post about actually doing it in jail and, and not just the CA troop, but um, in this case, I'm just going to do CA troop style. So that's it for the background stuff, and now I think we can go into the the, uh, the terminal window. Let's see here. Cool. So uh, I don't think anyone's saying anything well except for Daniel. Uh, yes, Linux later belongs in jails. Uh, with the crimes it gets up to, it absolutely belongs there. Okay. All right. So yes. Yeah, so this is uh, so here's FreeBSD. Here's the FreeBSD side of things. You know, just regular C shell. Um, I think that's uh, yeah. There's uh, NeoFetch. NeoFetch right there. So when I say like you have to you have to do this you know ch root style, here's what happens. So let's do it not ch root style first. So I have my hierarchy stashed in user com user local compat. Oops, yep, user local compat Arch Linux, and then I'll just uh, I'll just fire up the C shell, 
and we'll and we'll do a login style and spam call. So again, there's uh, because I invoked it as a login shell. You see that uh, you see that now it it detects that oh we're running uh, Arch Linux now because um, it because that C shell is the Linux elator C shell. It's the it's a Linux binary. In fact, just to prove it to you, you name there we go Linux. 4.4.0, .4 uh, the, the, the FreeBSD Linux kernel, right? So that's that. But right now we're not chrooted. So if you try to, let's say if you try to do, if you try to run sudo, for example, like in my password, I'm not in the sudoers file because it's not referencing the, one, it's not referencing the correct sudoers file to begin with, but, but there are some other, uh, there, there are some other missing things in there. So, uh, so we're, we're not ch rooted here. And so as a result, only very limited things work. Um, you know, the stuff is, stuff gets messed up because it's, it's expecting, you know, being that we're using an unmodified Arch Linux repositories, unmodified everything, it's expecting that it's an actual Arch Linux system, but it's not. So let's get out of this. And uh, now we'll do a, we'll do one style of ch -root. So ch root has a, the user, you know, user flag. Uh, so in theory, you know, everything should run as the user. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see truth. Uh, let's see. And so we'll do this. Oops. We'll log in, log in shell again. Of course, you got to run ch root as uh, as root. So now we're ch rooted. We're see it rooted into Linux later, but you know, in theory, we're running as user. Guess what? It says we're running as root, and 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 so root doesn't have doesn't have my uh, CSHRC and all that stuff. So there was no NeoFetch. NeoFetch didn't run. Whatever. So then, if you again, if you try to run, you know, sudo or something that uh, something that expects you know an actual environment, it's going to fail again. I'll, I will spare you that part. So. What I found, the proper way to do this, see it true completely as root. And yeah, you can forget about that part. See it true as root. But then, you SU as a regular user. And their uh, NeoFetch kind of hang there, but that's whatever. Clear that. Yeah, so NeoFetch hangs, um, but uh, yeah. Have I tested any of this with a new ch root as a non-root user feature? Um, are you aiming to jail the Zoom client? Not really. Uh, you know, I, I haven't. Uh, I really haven't really done any uh, any jailing of any desktop stuff yet. That's something I should do, but that's not on the that's not on the cards right now. So, uh, so yeah. Thanks for asking, though. Yeah. So we had to ask you. We had to go in as root and then su as the the regular user because there are certain things that uh, that actually require you to run as a regular user and not root. Um, ch root as a non well does that count as did, did what I just did? If I scroll up, did does that not count as ch root as non root user? Because because right here we, we just saw that uh, yes even though we are running we ch root it as myself as my regular user. When you actually print the environment variable, it still says it still says root. So tough. So now we're now we're actually as myself. And if I if I do sudo, if I run, you know, try to update the uh, repositories, you know. So my the, the sudo is file in this case uh, has has all the uh, has all the wheel uh, group um, being able to use it without the password. Uh, Pseudo C true does not count. Um, so in that case, uh, in that case, it didn't work. Uh, so in fact, oh. in my previous testing, this did not work. Yeah, operation not permitted. So we still have to. So maybe if maybe if we figure that figure that part out, um, there might be you know within within the next week. Uh, we might have a better, we are, I am current Alan. Uh, 
So, um, yeah, maybe if we get this working, you know, like sometime next week uh, before I do this, essentially the other side of this coin at Southeast Linux Fest, um, that would be cool, but I'm not, I'm not hopeful for that one. So, hang again. So, like I said, synchronizing. So that ran as, that ran as a pseudo, you know, as in, as in my SUD environment. So make PKG and AUR. I'm about to get there. Uh, so here we go. I'm trying to see which one I did it in. Okay. So make PKG and AUR. So while I was trying to get Zoom to work, or, or at least uh, yeah, trying to get Zoom to run, um, I, I, I thought I was missing a uh, undeclared library. So th this is what I did a little bit earlier today. Uh, you know, doing make PKG. So downloaded this thing cef minimal so i think that's called the chrome chrome something something I'm, I'm not a chrome person of course so make pkg um yeah it's gonna i passed in the appropriate flags uh for the for dependencies and whatnot uh yeah i'll try that daniel at, at some point so yes so make pkg you know it, it does this thing i i had to change a few things in the make pkg.com because of our Free BSD hierarchy stuff, but um, you know, but once I did that, and then I think I also had to install a GNU Core Utils and GNU Set uh, for a couple of things and modify some PKG builds to actually use them instead of our stuff. But uh, so here, here's the start build. Um, it detects that uh, you know, since we're running in FreeBSD mode here, uh, it detects you know Clang fourteen point zero point three in current, of course. So it detects all of this. And um, by the time I got here, I was like, wait, I'm not supposed to, uh, I, I want to use this in the Linux side of things and not the FreeBSD side. Um, so, but I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't quit it out of it at, at this point. Let it run for a little bit. So it, it's, it's using LLVM or Clang to build. And then of course it's going to error out as it should. Yes, Chromium embedded framework. That's what it, that's what it is. Yeah, so it, it, it errored out. That's fine, but at least, at least you know most of the mechanics of make PKG actually work in this um, in FreeBSD mode. So great. Uh, so that answered that question. Over here, so here here are my attempts at actually trying to get the Zoom binary to run. Um, that didn't go so well. Um, mostly, uh, so this is how far I got. Error while loading shared. So this libcef.so this was actually in the same directory as. Uh, Let's see, where is this? CEF Chrome Sandbox. It was in the same directory as this. And, and for some reason, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't finding it. it. Wasn't finding that uh, shared object in this same directory, even after passing, uh, passing whichever LD libpath or SH libpath or LD library path. It wasn't working there. It wasn't working either. But that, and, and that was, I think, uh, maybe 10 minutes before I started this. So. Right. So, meanwhile, in the on the Linux side of Make PKG, you know, uh, I didn't want that one. So here we uh, keep going up. I did. There we go. Linux side of Make PKG build CEF uh, minimal. All right. You know, it did its uh, missing dependencies bit. You know, so now when you start the build, uh, when CMake does this thing, C compiler identification GCC twelve point one. So now, now we know we're running, we're, we're, we're compiling on the Linux side using Linux GCC and out pops a proper, out pops a proper, uh, proper Linux binary, a proper Arch Linux package that uh, one can install. And that's exactly what I did uh, somewhere around here. Yeah, so remove the, remove the build dependencies and there we go, there we, there we go, installed it. We installed everything. So, um, that was me trying to list everything there. Yeah, and then and then there again, you know, we just try to we just try to do some try to do some uh, runtime stuff with Zoom, and that just wasn't uh, just wasn't working out just because of the the, the 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 library bit. But anyway, I think the overall overall takeaway, at least for this, at least for this, you know, as long as you can port over, as long as you can port over 
the the Linux distributions package manager of choice as long as as long as it has their they they have their repository set as long as you can as long as you're able to pull the port that over you should be that's i think maybe half of the way there of getting your favorite uh favorite linux user land to kind of work um of course there are some there are some more some more tidbits within the base system but that's that's not really this subject here and um but yeah like so 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 that also means you know like so one of my i think the next uh the, the next user land that I would personally like to try again, if I had the time, um, may, maybe if uh, if things don't get too crazy next week before self, uh, maybe we might get uh, we might get Void Linux uh, the Void Linux user land. Of course, they have Void Linux has an XBPS that is their package manager. Um, all, I believe it's also an integrated. Uh, they also have their own uh, package builder integrated within. Uh, but more importantly, uh, their official repositories has Muscle instead of glibc. That's something I would like to try um, because it's Muscle and glibc is just a bloated, is just a giant piece of bloat anyway. So, so um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, pretty much just figure out how to get the, yeah, get, just get the package manager over and uh, and then and then the rest is kind of kind of history. Um, I think that's really all I got for for really it. I mean, no slides, pretty much a live as I could demo, and I'm sure it failed just as miserably as Windows 98. So, um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm still looking on IRC. If uh, if anyone would like to, you know. Do some more stuff on IRC or or whatnot. Um, still here. Uh, yes, that is my. Uh, if you want to email me, that's uh, just add a dot org to the end of my Zoom name, Vishwin at FreeBSD dot org. Just add the dot org, and there's my email. And always on IRC. Okay. Question. Depend on System D services. Any solution? I haven't tried any uh, System D stuff. Um, I, I have not tried to uh, to run anything that was a service per se. You know, primary again, like I'm I'm a desktop person. You know, I'm really just here, at, at least with my experimentations, really just trying to get desktop programs to work. Um, so, like I said, like uh, when I was still running CentOS seven, um, you know, I pretty much only had that to run Portis um, for a class I needed. Uh, just to run quarters, just to get a couple of assignments in without uh, without trying to use this tablet here. So, um, so no, I've not uh, I've not tried any system D services in particular. Um, I doubt they work right now, but um, that's also an exercise for you if you want. Uh, uh, someone made it make made another little service to replace another. Yeah, so um, yeah, so. One of the one of the things I did work on um, ports wise, at least on the FreeBSD side, um, someone did split. Um, yeah, so there's e login D, um, which login D is part of system D, of course. So I, I tried to port e login D, but there are just way too many Linux isms for our sake. So yeah. Too, too many Linux isms in, in e login D and of course and by extension login D and uh, yeah I, 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 I had to give up on it it, it, would, it was there, there were it, there were enough that every single time e login D would get updated uh, it would have just been a, a maintenance nightmare so that's uh, so yeah no no uh, no login D at least uh, at least on the freebsd side and I can't really say for the Linux later side. Um, yeah, yeah, ran into desktop programs that, yeah, so Cinnamon, in fact, uh, Cinnamon, in fact, at, at one point, um, kind of asked for a login D and then someone added in, uh, console kit support, which, uh, you know, glad that happened, um, that someone added in console kit support, but, uh, but the Cinnamon folks did say that, uh, you, you were kind of on your own in terms of, uh, support and maintenance of the uh, console kit code because of course linux mint is linux mint so uh um but uh but 
while I was uh, doing one round, one of the previous rounds of updating Cinnamon, um, for some reason, uh, you know, certain in, in certain button presses would cause Cinnamon to crash. Uh, but the crashes were later than I found was because the default uh, setting between Log and D and Console Kit was still set on Log and D, and so it was trying to run Log and D like I think one of its. Uh, one of its query programs, and uh, of, of course, it was just a no such file or directory sort of a deal, and it crashed. But, um, but uh, yeah, thankfully there was that option of flipping over to console kit, and uh, all else was good. So, got any more questions before I check the schedule again? Oh, what was my oh, what was my motivation to use a rolling distro? Um, I don't. I actually don't like version stuff um, at all. Like especially for especially when you're doing desktop work. Um, well, actually, yeah, if you're just running desktop stuff in general, um, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe it makes a little bit sense if you're if you're doing it in, if you're doing like an infrastructure more of an infrastructure thing. Um, you know, like let's say if you got like a uh, if you got a data center, or if you got um, if if you have stuff that you really have to keep you know keep absolutely stable, or or if you're setting stuff up in space, things like that. Sure, like definitely go for something. Go for something version. You know, lock it down as much as you need to. Only update when uh, when it's critical or or you know that's going to work. Things like that. But for desktop stuff. Um, at, at least in my opinion and in my experience, it just, uh, just the, just sticking to, you know, sticking to a particular version or a particular, um, particular, uh, cycle and then try to backport bug fixes and whatnot. It, it gets old fast. It, it, well, it got, it got old very fast. And, um, you know, I actually did run Fedora and uh, OpenSUSE prior to running Arch Linux and, and um, yeah, it got it got really annoying when you know, like when you would have a bug or a series of bugs in you know certain desktop programs that uh, that only got addressed in later versions. But you know, the the distribution folks they just didn't backport anything, or or they didn't backport that particular fix. And so, and then and then you're trying to dig through all the all the stuff that they did backport and trying to see, you know how that patch would if you need to rework the patches or things like that and it, it, that that got old so um so yeah just in my experience just that the maintenance the maintenance burden at least on the desktop of running a rolling release was way less especially especially if you kept the if the packages were kept as a, as vanilla as possible as vanilla to upstream as possible um the, the rolling release was just way more um it was way more stable and just much less of a maintenance burden than uh, than the other style, so that's why we're doing the that, or, or that's why I do the rolling distro. Yeah. Oh yeah, I should probably show show a couple more pitfalls. Um, while we still have, I think another five minutes. Just uh, okay. Let me share the terminal screen again. Yes, keep keep uh, piping questions in if you have them. But forgot to actually share this part here. Right. So here's the here's the D message, or or, or at least the bits of D message that made it into the made it into varlog messages here. Um, let's see here. So let's scroll up. So this is all. Yeah. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of you know messages about unsupported syscalls or unsupported whatevers um a lot of these were a lot of the earlier ones at least earlier this morning um that was when i when i was either not ch rooted or it was using the wrong uh, sudo file or things like that um yeah yeah and then there's unsupported uh unsupported sockets um you know minor minor tidbit um uh, as long as you're running uh 
as long as your DNS servers are all IPv4. Um, so actually, in, in that sense, this is, yes, this is Linux side. So you, we try to do, so I've got, I, I, I'm an IPv6 person through and through, but unfortunately, um, you know, especially in the earlier days, I was like, why the hell, why that, why is my network, network stuff on the Linux side just not working? I was like, oh, great. Yeah. Later, later on, I found out that was because, see, look, so here's, I'm going to uncomment. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, what is it? It's blanking on me already. That's one of the DNS servers that I use. Uh, Hurricane Electric, yes. The Hurricane Electric, um, that's the Hurricane Electric uh, IPv6 DNS server. And then this is Hurricane Electric's IPv4. And then there's Google, Google, Google. Yeah, so Hurricane Electric, Google, Google. I'm, I'm just going to uncomment Hurricane Electric's IPv6 here. Oh, file is read only. Great. Forgot to do that. Hold on, I can't type today. There we go. I'll comment that. So then, um, I think I have links. I have links in here somewhere. Yeah. See, unable to connect a remote host because for some reason it's not. Uh, even though that's a perfectly valid and accessible uh, domain name, and that actually has a HTTP side of things, because it's the IPv6 uh, DNS server that we specified, no. I think, uh, and I think if we look at the DHP message again, uh, yeah, unsupported, set socked, opt, whatever it is, uh, this thing here. So, now meanwhile, if we, if we uh, yeah, so I recommented it again. Run links, there we go. In fact, let's go to BSD can, see how it looks the links, the, the, the Linux links, that is. Uh, give it a couple seconds. Refresh. Come on. I think we have to do the. Anyway, there's uh, there's BSD Can's website, 2022 in the Linux links. There. Any more questions?